Welcome to the EQ Glacier. First of all, I hope the food was good. <laughs> yes, great. I'm glad to hear that. Okay, so this is the Iki Glacier. This is an amazing glacier because it's really active. It calves pretty much all the time. That's why we go visit this one. We have another glacier. I don't know if you saw another one when we were sailing. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's way bigger than this one. And it calves way larger pieces off than this one. That's the one which makes all the big icebergs around here in the Iki Fjord. This one only makes small pieces like these ones. Of course, it can't calve off larger icebergs like that, but it's still quite rare. This one is probably from the other glacier as well. And the reason why we don't go with that one is because it don't calve as much as this one, and there's a lot of ice, so we can't really get there. And when these giant pieces, they fall off, they make really big waves, which we call tsunamis. And we, we still got tsunamis from this one. That's why you have to if you see a really big carving, just hold on to your camera and don't stand like this to take pictures. You don't want to fall in the water, okay? Okay. Right. Um, this ice which is falling off this glacier is actually all compressed snow. So it's layer after layer after layer of snow. And they fall from about 200 meters to 250 meters of height in the middle. So this glacier is actually 200. 250 meters high, tall, in the middle. And if I say it's about 200 to 250 meters tall, how far do you reckon we are away from the glacier right now? Just a second. Can you guess? One kilometer. One kilometer? Yeah. Five, 500 meters. Right, yeah. 800? No, we, we actually 1.5 kilometers away from the glacier. <laughs> but because we don't 1. have 5. anything to measure with, we have no idea because it just it seems like it's right there, but it's not really. You can see some small seagulls flying around. Seagulls? Yeah, seagulls just by the glacier front sometimes. They're just really tiny small white dots circling around. Yeah. Yeah. And the special thing around about this glacier is. Uh, not really special, but it's way more active in this corner over here in the middle. Then it is down there. Oh, okay, I just said it. <laughs> Typical, isn't it? <laughs> yeah. And you can see how dirty it is down there. It is all dust and sediments from the moraine. This is falling down, and of course, the more slower it comes, the more time it got to before it gets to, to, to be dirty. And the reason why we got this glacier here is because of the inland ice. And of course, this is directly connected to the inland ice. You can say this glacier front is inland ice as well. And I've been fishing the longboard and actually I managed to catch a piece which looked like Greenland. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you all see? Mm -hmm. So if you imagine, this is the Disco yeah. Bay, of course. <laughs> and in here we got all the inland ice. And because of the big amount of snow falling on the end of ice, it makes a really big pressure. And this pressure is just slowly pressing out in all of the small corners, which we see here on the west coast. And a little sad, and around here in Eki, and all the way up the coast, we got all these small um, glaciers, which um, the one Gangya and the little which is the biggest one, which carved really, really much. Um, and because uh, of this ice. Ice is actually moving just like glass or a running river. It still moves even if it's solid ice. That's why it can keep on carving without retrieving that much because it's carving extremely during the whole summer but it's not retrieving that much. It's still retrieving though but not as much as we if it wouldn't um, grow. During winter time though it grows really really fast because it's all frozen so it gets time to, uh, to come out quite big before it the cows and returns. Does it still calve in the winter? No, not really. A little bit, but not much at all. Just a little bit. And... I got it. <laughs> yeah, it's slippery, of course. It's ice. Uh, this ice is what we call black ice. It's actually not that good an example, um, because it's, there is still some white dust inside of it. And remember I told that all this ice, pretty much all of it, was compressed. All 
the white ice we see around us is compact snow. This one is water, which has been snow, which has been melted and then frozen again in a liquid state. Mm -hmm. That's why they call it black ice, because if you throw this in the water, it seems like it's pretty much black. And of course, I caught a nice piece of white ice as well. These ones. The reason why they're white is because they contain a lot of air. <laughs> oh. This white ice contains a lot of air because it's all compressed snow. And if I take my knife here and step into it, you can see it's really easy. This is all, yeah. And when this air is released, that's what makes this explosion and sound when they cough. That's from all the air being released. And you can actually feel when we're sitting here, you can hear the knittering. And actually you can, you can taste it as well. If you take a piece like this, you can come up, have a piece by me and just uh, after this, and you can put it on your tongue. Then you can feel the small air bubbles, they melt. So it's like they're sizzling on your tongue. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, exactly, gin and tonic or some whiskey. I have whiskey and barely actually. Yeah. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. But this glacier actually used to be way further out than this now. You can see. Uh, This glacier used to be way further out than it is now. You can see the moraine edges over there. Yeah. The gray. That's how far it went back in 1850. From that corner over there to the other corner over there. And back in 1500, it was all the way to the top pretty much. But there you see the gray line on the field. You got the dark side and the light side. And first now we're starting to see some vegetation on the light side on the field. So it goes really slowly here in the Arctic. So this glacier is retrieving. How long it will retrieve, we don't know. Actually, now it's starting to stand on pure bedrock. You can see in the middle, there's some bedrock which is exposed. And you see in the corner over there as well, we see the bedrock. So it's just about enjoying every minute of it because when this one is on full bedrock, it won't carve as much. And the pieces will fall down on pure rock instead of water. So this is really the right time to visit it. So it's about joining every minute of it. It's about 3.7 kilometers wide now. Quite a long distance. Are there any questions or anything? Why are the seagulls close to the glacier? Sorry? Why are the seagulls close to the glacier? It's because when the glacier is melting, it would, it would release a lot of air. And there's a lot of sediments coming out with the, with the, with the ice. But there's a lot of minerals in it. So there's heaps of life in this water. Okay. Lots of small shrimps and krills. And the seagulls love that. And we also see really many seals in here. So is the glacier moving down the top or just retreating? 
Yeah, it, it tops more than it grows right now, so it's retrieving, it's going back. But during winter time, when it's frozen, uh, when it's all frozen and it's solid, it moves out. So it'll get about four to five hundred meters further out. And sometimes you hear this big the cracks. They're in the behind the glacier. The long ones, which is coming for a longer time, is when they sand down in the water. And if you're really good, you can actually hear the difference between the carving when the uh, ice is released from the glacier and when it hits the water. I'll leave the knife here and then you can try to snap it and have a little piece. Yeah, exactly. Um, the swells, they come from the carvings. That's also where the tsunamis come from, when the big pieces they fall into the water. And these tsunamis actually get really big, and if you look on the other side, we have something called the suicide beach. This is how far the waves go up. You can see the beach over there. This is cliff. This is how far the biggest of the waves they go. And we have recorded, they're moving from carvings, which make 50 meters of waves. Mm -hmm. 